If it isn't my favorite patient, Mitch, and I'm sure I'm your favorite pediatrician. Hi, Dr. Edwards. I'm just here for my annual checkup. I like that. You're straight to the point. Well, let's not waste any time. Let's get things started. Well, after all that hard work, I have determined, Mitch, that you have high blood pressure. Oh, no. Is there anything I can do about it? Why, yes, Mitch, there is. I'm going to prescribe the drug. Tell Miss Sarden to you. It will help lower your blood pressure. That's great news. But how does it work? It works by inhibiting vasoconstriction in the smooth muscles of your arteries. Okay, but how does that work? Great question, Mitch. Let me show you on the signaling pathway for Telmisartan. Normally, angiotensin binds to the AT1 receptor, which causes a conformational change in the alpha G2 protein. This conformational change activates the beta and gamma subunits to activate PLC. This activation is caused by GTP hydrolysis. When PLC is activated, it activates DAG and IP3. IP3 acts on the sarcoplasmic reticulum to ultimately cause calcium to be released. Calcium acts on the sarcomere of the smooth muscle cells to cause vasoconstriction, which ultimately increases your blood pressure. However, when telmisartan binds to the AT1 receptor, a different conformational change occurs, which does not activate the beta and gamma subunits. This ultimately causes no calcium to be released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and thus no vasoconstriction occurs. That's really cool, Dr. Edwards. Is there anything that isn't known about this pathway? Well, yes, there is. What conformational changes occur when telmisartan binds at the alpha G2 protein are not known at this time. More research needs to be performed to figure this out. Well, that sounds wonderful. I will take your advice and take telmisartan. Cute kid, by the way. Well, thank you. That's Mitch Jr.